Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, May 7th at midnight, 2020 Mountain Time. The reason we're doing the update is because the new models are in. And it's a sin. Record-breaking snow. Yes, in mid-May. Hey, hey. Take a look at the totals in Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Well, the big story, you're looking at it. Very unusual Arctic air set to hit eastern U.S. with a record low temperature for May. A cold spare spell is set to hit eastern U.S. in the upcoming days, bringing along record lows, frost, and snowfall. Wait till you see the warnings and watches. Abnormally frigid temperatures for May will be brought down from the Arctic following a much warmer than normal January through March. This is not just some random one-off weather event, but an obvious trend towards the grand solar minimum. Keep calm. You're in the right place. It's boom time. Feeling like March and May, Mother's Day. Yes, it could threaten parts of Virginia with frosty freezing lows. We'll get to the models. Snow and record cold. Welcome to May, Connecticut. Hello. How can we be talking about the chance of snow and record cold in Maine? I'll tell you how. We've been warning about it for three years. Lehigh Valley may see record low temperatures this weekend. A very cold, nasty day expected Saturday. Look at those snow totals. Are you kidding me? Thunderstorms and rain in the plains and Mississippi Valley fire weather concerns for the four corners. This is a huge swath of dangerous heat and record wind. Uh, we're going to see some fires light up here. Winter storm watches and warnings in the blue. Winter storm advisories all the way down to Georgia in May. Freeze warnings in West Virginia and Western PA. Please protect your, well, I don't know if you'll be able to protect them. A system is expected to drop into the South Central Plains and mid to lower Mississippi Valley to produce strong to severe thunderstorms and locally heavy rainfall. Notice how they didn't mention any snow? Ho, ho, ho! Where did they go? Now, these storms may produce heavy rainfall and contain large hail and gusty winds. While the rain may yield some flash flooding concerns, the main concerns are up in the northeast. The beast in the northeast is coming to get you. Where am I? Here I am. Now, fire weather threats will be elevated to critical across the Four Corners region due to dry conditions. Gusty winds hasn't rained or snowed here in two weeks. We're looking at some good precipitation Monday, Tuesday, hopefully. But the main story, hundreds of counties under frost and freeze warnings and winter storm watches. And we're going to check the models right now. We're going to go through the GFS and the CMC for you. So let's take it back, back to your Friday. And sometime Friday night, Saturday morning, the snow's going to begin in central PA, drop down the southern Appalachians, almost all the way down. Take a look. Virginia, North Carolina, you're going to get it. And the heavy snow already falls in Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, and starts spreading into Maine. It's insane. 8 to 16 inches predicted for some regions through Sunday, which will be your fun day. Some heavy snow here in North Dakota, which we're not talking about because it's North Dakota. It is not this region. And heavy snow in Montana, some snow up here in Wyoming. Pales in comparison to the models that we're showing you here. The CMC gets even more ridiculous with the totals here. 16 to 18 inches for the entire northern half of Maine. Do you see that? Record snow, northern half of Vermont. Record snow patch in New Hampshire. The DAX on the CMC picking up record snow up to 16 inches. Cinches. And heavy snow all the way down into North Carolina. Through <laughs> May 11th. Crazy. Now let's talk about some of the sharticles and the horrible journalism coming out. Because almost nothing is being talked about climate here. Bye, snow. This is from Channel 9, Not News. This year could be the earliest final freeze in Denver in 12 years. That's what they claim in the headline. Okay? No one fact-checked this. This is the biggest <laughs> joke ever. So 
let's go back to the headline here. Walk, work, work with me. This year could be the earliest final freeze in Denver in 12 years. And in the video, they talk about it. It just froze on May 5th. The average last freeze date is May 4th. And we froze on May 5th, which is after the average. So how in the world, just when I saw that, I was like, how in the world could it be the earliest final freeze in 12 years in Denver? Well, let's come look at some more of the data. The last freeze in 2018 was April 25th. Now, 1920, that's two years ago. The last freeze was April 18th. I mean, <laughs> in 2018 was April 25th, and they just froze on May 5th. So how can it be the earliest final freeze in 12 years? It can't be. In fact, it's one of the latest final freezes. It's going to freeze again this weekend. Let's watch the video. It'll, it'll blow your mind. You can write any title in an article and no one cares what it means. You could say the world is ending and the whole article could be about penguins. The average date for the final freeze in Denver is May 4th. This morning's 30 degree measurement exceeded that by one day. Last year, it wasn't until May 22nd that we had our final freeze in Denver. And in 2018, the last freeze was in April. Freezing temps are still possible on the front range this season as... So they just outed themselves as liars. It is not going to be the earliest final freeze. It may be the latest final freeze, thanks to the grand solar minimum. And it's snowing, record snow in the Northeast. I don't know. Well, that's all I want to share there. But let's talk about Southwest Australia. Perth storm hits with force as fierce cold front cuts power to 55,000 homes in Western Australia, Southwest. Put another shrimp on the barbie because you're going to need the heat. It's obviously whipping up cold and quick this fall in the Southern Hemi. The strong winds brought trees and power lines down into cars and property in Perth. Here you see a Beamer completely crushed. I'm sure the soul of the man who owned it crushed as well. Heavy rain damaging winds from a fierce cold front which hit Perth and Western Australia, Southwest, have prompted hundreds of calls to emergency services and left 55,000 homes without shrimps in the barbie. If they were using electric. The state of emergency services, CES, has responded to more than 500 requests for help since 5 p.m. yesterday. When the cold front moved from the south, I mean, who knew that they'd, they'd get the little nipples all done like that? Moving on. Powerful earthquake shakes Indonesia. A powerful earthquake has shaken the islands of eastern Indonesia, coming in at 6.9. No damage or injuries. Middle of the ocean. Not even a tsunami threat or nothing. Not even the little ocean symbol here. Pretty boring. Normal activity on the west coast of South America. Nothing to worry about. Little Rumbler 5.1 in Kyrgyzstan. And then this little boomer. Hey, 3.1 in Bedford, With Canada. With the savings rates offered at some banks. What? We don't want you anymore. We got to turn that off. Okay, worldwide volcano news update. New volcano to add to the list today, and we'll get to it. Kluchiskyov, Semaru, Nevados de Chilan, Aso and Ibiko in the last 12 hours have gone puff, puff, pass. Nothing significant. Flight level 10,000. Here we see 14,000 at Semaru. Nevados de Chilan at 14. Kluchiskov obviously puffing to 20,000. We know where that goes. Right there. Flight level 200, by the way, folks, means 20,000 feet. In case you're not a pilot. Now, the big news, we're coming down on at Rincon da Vallejo. That's not the big news. But that uh, is doing something. Recorded a puff to 7,000. Shishaldan is glowing. Look at that little spot. <whistles> it's hot up there. Don't go camping. Well, camp near it. It's warmer. But we're talking about Gamma Lama Ding Dong volcano in Halamera Hara. <laughs> Hamahara. Try to say that five times fast. Halmahara. Hamahara. Anyway, in Indonesia, Gamma Lama Ding Dong Volcano is puffing and passing. It's reawakening, and this baby blows ex explosively. And look at the amount of cinder cone that's built up here. This is a fully formed, this whole cap could blow off. Similar to the Tambora eruption, the year without the summer. Now, 
According to PVMBG, surveillance cameras observed a white plume that rose just a couple, just a tippy touch above the surface there. But if you want to know more about Gamma Lama Ding Dong, click on that button or Google it. Don't Google Gamma Lama Ding Dong. Just Google Gamma Lama Volcano. And check out what the Smithsonian has to say about it. But Gamma Lama Volcano here, typical eruptive types. Let's come over to the data set over on the right. Explosive. And that, my friends, well, you know what that means. Boom time. Yes. And if we come here, look at the explosivity dates. The majority here are back during the Centennial Minimum and the Dalton through the Maunder. So this baby clearly is excited during low solar activity, which is why it might be puffing now. But I'm passing. Scientists explain magnetic poles wanderings. No, they don't. BBC News. I read the article. They, they say the Earth has a dynamo and it shifts and it's a metal core. And I, I just read that out of a book. But it doesn't tell us anything. It even doesn't even say that it's a, it doesn't even warn you. It doesn't warn you that in 40 years, the pole went from here to here. Are you kidding me? Whew. Nothing to see here. It's just wandering around. It does it always. Not true. The pole has wandered around for hundreds of years in this position over Canada until recently when it's shooting across the face of the planet past the north rotational pole towards Siberia. That is something to talk about. And you know what else they don't talk about here? The, the South Pole. I don't know. I don't know how these people actually have salaries and get paid to write this crap. My God, give me half of their money and I'll do a better job. Period. Surprise asteroid evades Earth protection satellites in one of the closest flybys ever recorded. Now, if this is the closest flyby ever recorded and it didn't cause a massive explosion like the Tunguska event, then that last paper we covered yesterday is a shark, which I already said was. So here we go, and there we are. They're showing a picture of a comet, which has nothing to do with asteroids, but they show it there anyway, as to confuse you, as if this was the object that just flew by. No, the object was the size of a, it was tiny. Uh, and here is that flyby, closest ever to Earth. Wow. Look at the trajectory. Check it out yourself if you want to scare yourself to death about something that never happened. It's already over. Isn't that crazy? A truck size asteroid. A truck size, which means if it hit in your backyard, your house would probably still make it. <laughs> That's how stupid this article is. It's The media has devolved into a fear mechanism. Let's just scare people regardless of factual information. And then I'll feel good at night when I go home to my to my family and feed them and eat dinner and all that. I'm going to be so happy I scared the out of everybody based on nonsense. Whew. I can't wait until the grid goes down and I never have to make another video again, to be quite honest. It's going to be a, my retirement. Steve Lexon will give a virtual Chimney Rock presentation for free to the public because of the flu pandemic. And so instead of you having to live here, and I don't know why they haven't done this before. The whole world will get to watch this presentation live for free. So instead of just 27 people showing up and people being embarrassed that they even were there giving a talk, actually hundreds of the people. Date for the come on. And Shut up. Man, they're really hacking us tonight. Now, they're going to be talking about the Chacoan people or the Chacoan style of living, because we know very little about these people. Chimney Rock Interpretive Association, or CREA, is a bunch of um, volunteers for my region, just like myself, scientists, non-scientists, just local people who love the history in our region. And they have some of the best tours of any state and national monuments in the world here, because they're very knowledgeable. We're surrounded by Native Americans. The, Half of the volunteers are Native Americans. They want to continue their heritage, and they want to get to the bottom of what their ancestors were actually doing. Unlike mainstream science and the media, there are actually people that care about the lies that have been perpetrated and the fraud that we're living. So if you want to know more about your ancient history, there is a free Zoom presentation live that, uh, 
on the virtual Chimney Rock presentation. It's right here. I'm going to leave you links below. The presentation will be at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Here is the Zoom link. Go to chimneyrockco.org backslash lecture. Just click on the link, for goodness sake, in the link below the video. If you don't know how to get the links below the video in the description box, you're years late. Please ask someone, a teenager, your neighbor, and, and ask them how to use YouTube. Please. I spend the majority of time not making these videos, but putting the links below for you to enjoy. And do you know how the percentage of viewers click on the links? Yeah. It's a measly 4% that actually care about what I talk about and fact check me. So out of the 15 to 20 million views over the last three years from this channel, only 4% actually care about what I say and fact check me. It's kind of nice that we have that amount of people that actually fact check. Now let's fact check Forbes. Think our son is a nice constant star. Changes might be coming. Now Elizabeth Fernandez gets paid by Forbes to write fluff pieces about nothing. This whole article is like a kindergarten version of uh, information on stars. Basically for sheep to read Barely absorb and then forget about. It says nothing and it means nothing. Just like Elizabeth Fernandez's career. So, and luckily for us, you have people like Diamond, Ben Davidson, and others that are watching the sun constantly that know a thousand times more than this uh, non-reporter. No, it's enough on her. Let's talk about real scientists like Judith Curry. Yes, we love her. Climate, etc. JudithCurry.com. Impact of the 2,400-year solar cycle on climate and human societies. We've shown you the data. You've seen it on the graphs. And we're living the next flexure point. The role of solar variability on climate change. Now, by the way, this paper came out in September of 2016. And the non-reporter that wrote the last article didn't even get any information on what she was writing about. None whatsoever. She Googled uh, Sun's variability and took the Wikipedia and ran with it. <laughs> That's how embarrassed I am to even be a retired scientist. I haven't been in academia for two decades. And I know more than almost everyone on the internet, on in mainstream media, and the scientists currently writing papers. Now, they're not writing papers to get actual information or breakthroughs out to you for the most part. The majority of papers are for corporate means so that they can be funded to, to produce the shite that you're reading, which is complete nonsense, helps no one, provides zero solutions, and only benefits multinational corporations. Did you just hear that? Well, then that was a loud popping sound. That's your head coming right out of your ass. Good job. Now, let's get back to real scientists like Judith Curry. Now, four years ago, she talked about the role of solar variability on climate change. Despite having a very long scientific tradition, it's currently downplayed as a climatic factor with the most popular hypothesis for climate change, and that's the global warming hypothesis of CO2. And most of you smart people or objective thinkers, even critical thinkers, can know that CO2 does not control the climate. It's been going straight up. And the temperature has been straight flat. It goes up and down like this. It's not a control mechanism. In fact, it has no relationship whatsoever to the climate, CO2. CO2 follows over here whatever the climate does over here. So as the, how do I do this? As the temperature rises, CO2, where am I over here? As the, <laughs> you get me. Let's just do it all together. Here's the temperature rising. I guess what CO2 does. It follows it. Okay, we did that in reverse. Hope you got something out of the video. I just confused myself. But frequency analysis of solar variability during the Holocene proves that there are major multi-decadal, centennial, and even millennial fluctuations based on solar output. And guess what happens every 12,500 years? Oh, we either come out or go into an ice age. And guess where you're living? Yes, it's getting chilly, folks. And that's a boom. Please share this with like-minded people. Please continue to support us on Patreon as subscribers are dropping off. 
due to the fact that many of you around the world are becoming unemployed on purpose, poor on purpose, and hungry soon on purpose. I hope you've heeded our warnings over the years and you have properly provided for your family. Proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance in the globalist future that you're entering. They're going to unravel this beast before your very lives. And it's only going to get worse. There will be very limited recovery, some fake moments to give you hope, but it is going to continue to go down, 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 down. Unless you own precious metals, seeds, dry goods, preparedness tools, you know how to provide your own family. You're growing your own food, meat, you can wild source food or meat locally because you fish and hunt and you grow your own food. You're going to be living in very difficult times in the coming years. In just five years, it is my opinion that major grid failures worldwide will continue to roll out. Prior to that, we're going to have global unrest due to the clo to this COVID pa pandemic nonsense. They are purposely bankrupting countries so that they can reveal the globalist plan to save all of humanity. Isn't it sweet? We live in the dystopian future that had been written about for decades. No one listened. I've been warning. And you're watching. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to all our one-time donors. And the most important person that watches this video is the one that shares it. Sharing is caring. That's boom.